Today, let's talk about an important technique for integration. It is integration by parts. We know the formula. Integral u dv equals uv minus integral v du, where uv are functions of x. Do you know where does it come from? Well, it comes from the product rule of differentiation, as we can prove that. So, the derivative of u times v, we know equals u prime v plus u v prime. Now we keep this term on one side, move this term to the other side. So we get u v prime equals the derivative of the product minus u prime v. Now we integrate both sides. So we get integral u v prime dx equals integral u v prime dx minus integral, I change the order. So v u prime dx. So you see v prime dx is dv. So get integral u dv and here differentiation and then integration, we get back to the function. So u v and here u prime dx equals du. So get integral v du. See, we get the same formula. Now let's apply this formula to integrate some indefinite integral. So integral x e to x dx. You see, it is hard to figure out the antiderivative. Now let's let u equals x, the remaining part, as dv, so dv equals e to x dx. And according to this formula, we also need to know du and v. So we know this one. So du equals dx. And this one we can write as derivative e to x dx. So we can write as d e to x. So dv equals d e to x. So v equals e to x. So the given indefinite integral can be written as u dv4. So we get integral u, which is x, dv, so d e to x. Now we can apply this formula. So that equals uv, so we x e to x minus integral v, which is e to x du, so dx. See, we, from, we start from a, a difficult integral, we get a easier integral because we know the antiderivative which is just e to x. So finally we get the answer, x times e to x minus e to the x plus c, because this one is indefinite integral. Now I have a big question. How to choose u and dv? Well, here is a general rule called L I A T V. L means logarithmic function, I inverse trigonometric function, A algebraic function, T trigonometric function, E exponential function. And U would be the first function comes first. So, so U would be the function. 
comes first. Okay. And dv equals the other part. Yeah, so the other. Let's look at our example again. So see. Integral x e to the x dx. We know x is algebraic function. e to the x is an exponential function. a comes before e, so that's why we take u as x and dv as the remaining part. This is a e to x dx. Now let's look at next example. So we see in definitely go x squared ln x dx. We know x squared is algebraic function and ln x is a logarithmic function because L comes before A, so we should take U as ln x, right? So then u equals ln x. Then dv equals the remaining part. So e x where dx. Again, we need to figure out du and v. So du, we know equals derivative of ln x times dx. We know that equals one over x times dx. To find v, we need to find the antiderivative of x squared, which is x cubed over three. So we get x cubed over three prime dx. Then we can write as d x cubed over three. So dv equals d x cubed over three. So we get v equals x cubed over three. So the given integral x squared ln x dx, we can write as u dv4. So we get integral u, which is ln x dv. So d x q over 3. Now we can apply this formula. So e equals uv, so ln x times x cubed over three minus integral v du. So x cubed over three du. We know du equals one over x dx. We write this factor first. So x cubed over three ln x minus, we take one third out. So one third, and then you see, and also we can cancel x. So here we only have x squared. Okay, so you know the antiderivative of x squared equals x cubed over three plus a constant c. So finally, we know the answer. x cubed over three ln x minus x cubed over nine plus c. Now let's look at our last example. This time we consider a definite integral. So let's consider integral from zero to one, uh, 10 x dx. We know r 10 is an inverse trigonometric function. So i and x is algebraic function. We know the rule, L-I-A-T-E. So I comes first. So we take this part as U. So let U equals R 10 X and the remaining part as DV. So DV equals DX. Then we calculate du. So du equal to root of arc 10, which is one over one plus x squared times dx. 
dv equals dx, so v equals x. So the given definite integral are can x dx. We know that plus u, that plus v. So equals u times v. So r can x times x. You need to put the upper limit and lower limit. So one and zero minus integral from zero to one. V du, so V is x. Du, we know, is dx over one plus x squared. When x equals one, we know arc 10 at one equals pi over four. So times one. When x equals zero, arc 10 at zero equals zero. So zero times zero. For the second part, integral from zero to one, we know the bottom is one plus x squared. So I want to change the top to connect to the bottom. So I box the top to be one plus x squared prime. But the outcome of this one is 2x. We only have x. So we need to multiply half, right? And then dx, the bottom one plus x squared. So here we get pi over four. Here just zero. Minus half. Integral from zero to one. We know we can write the top as d1 plus x squared over 1 plus x squared. At this point, we can use this formula. Integral du over u equals ln absolute value u plus c. Right. So then, the given integral equals pi over four minus half. Okay, so we view u as one plus x squared, so we get ln absolute one plus x squared. According to the fundamental theorem of calculus, the definite integral of this one equals the antiderivative of this one and you vary at the two end point or uh, two limits, so one and zero. So then we get pi over four minus half. When x equals one, we get ln two. When x equals zero, we get ln one. We know ln one equals zero. So finally, we get pi over four minus ln two over two. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this video. Thank you.